What's up? I'm Brooke Delo. I'm Jack Davey. We're Jay Davey. And you're watching Hip Hop DX at Red Bull Studios. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I know I was just burnt we just, out. We were just exhausted. We were just burnt out on the process, on the politics, on, you know, it was just like then what happened was we had cultivated this sound unknowingly for so long and got so many no's and so many setbacks. And then we're listening to the radio and we're looking on television and we're seeing all these people doing, that. doing the shit that we have been doing <laughs> for a while. I mean, not to be you know, yes. braggadocious about it, but that's just what it is. You know, we turn on the television and it's like, wow, that girl looks just like me. And that sounds like a bootleg Jay Davey song. For me, I was like, Ugh. I would like to remove myself so I don't get caught. Because what started to happen was it became more so about the gimmicks and all of these things that you could take from us and try to mimic than what it really was, which was Somebody the chemistry. Somebody take, take the hairstyle. The haircut and then it becomes the... like, <laughs> you're, you're lumped into that. I mean, I had that hairstyle for almost eight years and then one day I was like, I don't want it anymore and I shaved it off. Right. And I remember walking into a meeting with our managers with like a skin bald head. No, he was like skin bald. Skin bald. <laughs> and they were probably like, this bitch is fucking crazy. <laughs> but it was just like, I have to, I have to move on. I felt like I, I, what we weren't, or for me anyway, I wasn't progressing forward as an artist. I was just stuck in this caricature of myself. Yeah, I mean, it, I feel like it, be, it becomes that if you, you know, when people allow like a look or a thing, you're trying to hold on to like what you what you think you are it's like well if you lose this hairstyle then you lose everything it's like yeah. actually what what we were doing wasn't about that, that. At all. you know what i mean like it, it it's great that it transcended and it became you know a, a thing where other people felt like oh now i'm an edgy chick because I shaved the size of my head. Blah, blah, but I wasn't blah, the whatever. first person to do it, you know? Well, I won't be the last person to do it, you know? Um, that's what, when it started getting into that, like, who's ownership of the hair? Like, who has ownership <laughs> of the haircut? <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be a part of this shit anymore. I mean, in reality, Marcia Hamilton was- In reality, I mean, Marcia was definitely my guru, but in reality, Salt and Peppa and the chick from Bow Wow Wow and like, yeah. You know, you know, Tonto, you want to go back to fucking, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. But, you know, everybody's trying to take <laughs> trying to take credit or get credit for some shit. You know what I mean? And so I feel like even though it's 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 a flip side to it. It's like there's a part of it where I don't feel like we harp on like we did that first. However, I do notice there Listen. are some very specific references out there. In particular, there's one huge artist, huge artist right now, one female pop star, who we did a show at the Roxy, uh, I want to say it was like maybe eight years ago. Maybe less than that. It probably was like, what, five years ago? Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> we did this show. Was and it really? When, uh, it's, mm, it starts. Six or seven it years starts, ago, maybe. Yeah, it's this, all this. So we did this show, and this is when she had, I don't know if you were blonde then. You weren't blonde then, but she, you know, definitely had the mohawk popping. But, you know, she would go between, like, having the black hair and the blonde hair and whatever, whatever. And on stage, we had um, all mannequins. All broken down mannequin pieces. Yeah, like, you know. Mannequins all over the place. Mannequins and televisions, like a few televisions just, like, you know, with random, like a, a friend, of, friend of mine and I did some like random like art stuff or whatever. So literally later that year, this huge artist who will go unnamed. She pops up. <laughs> she pops, pops up. up, up. stage set. This whole stage exactly. set is like her in the middle with this blonde whoosh, mohawk thing with mannequins and televisions everywhere for her big New Year's Eve show. And, and I'm like, that's pretty dead on. We're going to let you slide. <laughs> but at the end of it, you know, it. once we started getting caught up in the ownership of it, then that's when for me, I was like, mm, I, don't, I don't know how I want to do anymore. this right Yeah, And I was like, I don't know how I want to do this shit right now, so I'm just not going to do it. 
like even musically, I was like, I just want to make music with a guitar now. I don't, I don't even want to make music that sounds anything like anything I've been doing, you know? We were both establishing these great connections with Miguel, um, him on the music side, me on the writing side, and I shifted my focus to that. I was like, I would rather just write for people. I don't want to have to be on tour 300 days out of the year to make my money, you know? And then that turned into everybody being like, they broke up, they hate each other, she's singing background for Miguel, or she's just trying to write, he's just doing this, and people, you know, I guess, it was nice for us to dip off for a while and not be heard from or seen. Because at a certain point, you just start oversaturating yourself in the market, and people, I think people were just kind of, they didn't really know what to do with us. We didn't really know what to do with us. One thing we've had to learn, and which we revel in now is let other people in your work speak for you. You don't have to say a word. Yeah. 